Hello, my name is Kristen Railing. Welcome to the Performer's Guide. Today, we will be discussing the stages of sales funnels. So when you are a business owner and you're acquiring new clients or trying to build new customer relationships, it's important to think about actively the stages of sales funnels and really understand which stage your market is in when you are creating your advertisement. So as, as a new business, oftentimes the first stages of your marketing is going to lead your clients out to the awareness phase. They don't even know that you exist. They don't know that your business exists. They don't know what products and services you offer. They might not even know who you are as a person yet. So the first stage is awareness. Hello, I'm a business owner. These are the services I offer. Just letting you know that these services are available for you. Um, oftentimes people need to hear a new product or service or see an advertisement over 20 times. I actually need to figure out the exact number before they are even interested in taking that next step, which is to discover more about this business. So if you think about when you see ads on Facebook or on television, perhaps Google, it'll come through your awareness a few times and it'll hit your face and you'll see it a few times, but it's not until it's been repetitively and consistently shown to you over a long period of time in a consistent manner that people start to think, oh, this is a company that I can trust and potentially do business with. So I'd like to discover more about them. So in the discovery section, maybe now the client's going out of their own way to do a little bit of research about your business. Uh, potentially you are also now describing the services a little bit deeper. What exact services are you offering? What's the price? What are they gonna get for it? And in this phase, they're sort of discovering exactly what options are available to them through your business. So once I'm aware of the business and I've discovered the service that I'm interested in, the next step is evaluation. And the evaluation phase can actually be very short time or it could be a very long time. So if you think about um, impulse purchases, the evaluation phase is quite short, right? You see something, you've discovered you want it and you make uh, an evaluation and a quick purchase. But most times people have to sit in the evaluation phase for a while. They sit and they are aware, they've discovered the service they want. Now they're gonna evaluate who you are as a business owner, how your products are received, what reviews they're getting. And this is sort of when they start kind of looking at what other people are saying about the business and making sure that your actions reflect your marketing in a way that is, again, consistent and reliable so that they trust you, okay? So once your client is aware that you exist, they discovered the services that they wanted, and now they've evaluated um, the intent the, or evaluated the service itself, then they go through what's called the intent phase. They know that they want this service, but they might not actually be ready to, to make the purchase. And so once your client is in the intent phase, this is where the sales start, okay? Um, oftentimes people try to start the sale in the first three, but this is often too soon and may scare your client, your potential client away if you try to force them to purchase before they have been able to discover, evaluate, and um, understand your services. So, once they have the intent, again, I could have the intent to purchase a product, but the time between my intent and the purchase could be a wide variety of time. The intent and purchase, again, if it's an impulse buy, the evaluation intent and purpose purchase 
happens almost instantaneously. But with larger purchases and purchases that might have a longer term repercussion or require a longer commitment, um, the intent on the purchase may have a longer time period in between. So maybe this person needs to save money or maybe they're not mentally or emotionally or physically prepared to purchase your services. Um, perhaps they've already made a commitment with somebody else and that needs to end before they can jump to your service. There's a wide variety of reasons why someone might have the intent to purchase your service or product, but might not do so for a period of time. So this is the getting, right? At this point, you've just gotten a client. And so the bottom part is the loyalty phase, which is where you work on keeping your customer base. This is where you work on your loyalty and your rewards programs, um, potentially referral programs, additional discounts. This is where you wanna build the relationship between you and your customer segment. Otherwise, you just have a single time purchase that drops off. And so the goal is to have someone go all the way through the funnel to the loyalty section. But many times, clients just get to the purchase. They make a purchase and then they walk away. They make a purchase and they walk away. And so what you see is you have to get people to one, two, three, four, five, and then they walk away, where if you can get them into the loyalty phase, then you just go five, six, five, six, five, six, maybe up to the four if you're introducing a new high-end product to them, but they're not going through the awareness, discovery, and evaluation phase. They already trust your services. And now they're just making the intent to purchase this new service, okay? So the more you can focus on the relationship, uh, the keeping and growing of your customer, the less energy you're gonna spend taking each individual person through the sales funnel, okay? So this is an introduction into sales funnels, and we will talk more about this in greater depth during the sales funnel module. Again, my name is Kristen Railing, and thank you so much for visiting the Performer's Guide. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.